Okay, remember that they're changing my voice. So here I am by Independence High School and Overfill Gardens, the park in Eastside, San Jose. And I'm going to be going over Revelation 18 again uh, because I wasn't able to do a good job in Santa Clara because everything that was uh, going on. So a key part I want to zoom in on is verse 3 where it says, For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. So this part very much connects to the end of the chapter. Verse 23, where it says, The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bride and bridegroom will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's important people. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. So we see that it first brings up in verse 3, that all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. And in verse 23, it says that by Babylon's magic spell, all the nations were led astray. So it's saying that the maddening wine of her magic spell, it's like a witch with her kettle, right? But it's figurative. It's psychology, it's propaganda, it's temptation. It's theater arts. It's deceit, you know, falsehood. All those things are forms of falsehood. It's illusion, right? The word ill and illusion. And the word ill rhymes with the word hell for a reason. And the Canaanite deity El, whose counterpart is basically Saturn and Cronus, who said to eat his own children over time, right? Father time. Christmas and the temptations and the materialism, the festival of Saturnalia. And Saturn, a play on words for set urn, and say turn as the devil wants you to believe that magically it's his despicable which is not turn it is not you're never supposed to give the devil a damn turn that is ridiculous so we also see it says in her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people of all who have been slaughtered on the earth so as society seeks to benefit from the mass murder, from the starvation, from the ill-gotten gains, from the exploitation of the workforce in a way that causes people to die, to suffer, to be unhealthy, to rot, to be miserable, to turn to crime, to supplement their income, and so on and so forth. How many working class families have children that turn to crime because they can't afford basic things? How outrageous is that? How easy it is to just simply raise the taxes on the rich, okay, and to, and to apply cost-effective spending. If the politicians can't get it right, I'm sure there's countless people that could. So why didn't they? Because they would rather follow their father, the devil, and to be drunk with the maddening wine of adulteries, the maddening wine of the blood of the prophets and of God's holy people, all who have been slaughtered on the earth, all who have been mistreated, all who have been abused in various ways. It is like, you know, a sadistic serial killer or something who takes pleasure in the suffering of people he perceives to be innocent, he or she. And as we see People go down a path of trying to seek pleasure from the systems of exploitation, of torture and murder that exist here on this planet in every nation. It's not just America, it is every nation. As Martin Luther King said, he said, the greatness of America is the right to protest for right. Because it was wrong. It wasn't great, it was wrong. All political parties have it wrong. All politicians have it wrong. 
When the government changes my voice in my videos and otherwise to try to make it so I sound like some damn propagandist or something, instead of my natural, harmonious, and righteous voice, it's because they have it wrong. So the kings of the earth committed spiritual adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries, and Baal, whose Greek equivalent is Zeus, is a deity of merchants and sailors and rape by deception and despicable forms of greed and sin. It says in the other verse that the merchants were the world's important people. Okay, the merchants were said to be the important people and they were the main ones who benefited from the blood of the prophets and of God's holy people of all who have been slaughtered on earth. And obviously that's despicable. So we go back to verse 1, it says, After this I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit. So the angel was obviously angry. He had great authority, and he was not seeking to remove himself from the situation, but to address the situation with righteous indignation, with moral outrage, and with focused moral intensity, with universal pinpointed moral precision, with moral fortitude and moral will. A haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Then it says, warning to escape uh, Babylon's judgment. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. Okay, now, is he talking to just the Jews? No, he's saying anyone who would obey God's command, anyone who would come into the divine commandments and the divine order, into the divine path and ways of God, should leave the global system spiritually, culturally, socially. It says in Psalms that I refuse to have anything to do with the wicked. I refuse to sit with the wicked. I refuse to revel with the wicked. To come out of her, come out of her spirit, come out of a state of complicity, to come out of the box of evil. So that they will not share in her sins. So they will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given, pay her back double for what she has done pour a double portion from her own cup. Okay, again, remember that cup was full of the maddening wine of her adulteries. So as she goes crazy from benefiting from shedding innocent blood, okay, she goes more and more crazy as the righteous are taken away that there's no way to be sane. There's no way to be balanced and, and logical. There's no way to have mental clarity because the righteous and righteousness has left the earth and left them with no way to return to a moral state, a state where life is worth living. Say, so give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow, I will never mourn. It's the inhabitants of the earth refusing to admit that they're in an immoral state and they think that their path is okay. But you have to transcend evil. You have to come into what's righteous. Reject what is evil. Embrace what is righteous. Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her, death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. Now remember, the Lord is a consuming fire. Her wickedness will kindle the fire in her soul, and she'll rot rapidly. But who is she? She's the global system. She's every nation, every culture that's not morally precise. When the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shared her luxury see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her. Terrified at her torment, they will stand far off and cry, Woe, woe to you, great city, you mighty city of Babylon. In one hour your doom has come. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargo. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk and scarlet cloth and every sort of citron wood and articles made of every kind made of ivory costly wood bronze iron and marble cargoes of cinnamon and spice of incense myrrh and frankincense of wine and olive oil of fine flour and wheat and cattle and sheep 
horses and carriages and human beings sold as slaves. That's the really key part there. Human beings sold as slaves. There's various forms of slavery, modern slavery. But what these things are referring to, they're figurative. It's metaphor. They're drawing a comparison. They're painting a picture by pointing to certain items that are similar to certain spirits and types of people and things of that nature. Again, you have the oil, right? The wine. See, nobody, it's kind of like when people say, I don't buy that. I don't believe that. Nobody believes it. Nobody really has their heart with it anymore because over time, the spirit of evil rots the planet. So the merchants have taken the wrong path. They've worshipped Baal, they've worshipped money. You can't serve God in money. Okay, merchant to merc, which means to make less, to destroy, to kill. Okay, and merchant is connected to mercenary, as they are like mercenaries of the devil. They are the officials and the merchants who are to compare to, uh, uh, to where, which locusts are compared to in the Old Testament. They will say the fruit you long for is gone from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. So they will never, right? The earth sinks never to rise again. The global system falls, right? Heaven and earth pass away and a new heaven and earth is made by God who can make everything anew. He makes it so that animals reproduce, people reproduce. He made it so the stars will multiply, the grains of sand on the beach, and he can make a new heaven and a new earth. And that is the plan of God, to reward the righteous and to punish the wicked for eternity because that is the path they went on. If you threw your children off a cliff, for example, there's no coming back from that, they're dead. And forever your family would bear that on some level. And so it is with the eternal failure, eternal punishment. So we first gotta ask ourselves, what is it? And we gotta ask ourselves, what does it mean? Then we have to ask ourselves, what do we do? What is eternal punishment? It's when you suffer for eternity, the disgrace of having let down God and been evil instead? What does it mean? It means total failure. The deeper meaning is something that's very difficult to describe. I could multiply words for a long time and it wouldn't describe it effectively. There's so many connections. What does it mean to be alive? What does it mean to love? What does eternal failure mean? And what do we do? We scramble into the divine order. Proverbs 16, 10 through 12. A divine verdict is on the lips of the king. Which one? 16.12 tells us the throne is established in righteousness. And 16.11 warns us not to use dishonest scales because accurate scales and weights and measures come from God. Isaiah 27.18, righteousness and justice is the measuring line and plume line and hail sweeps away the refuse, the lie, and water, the water as a destructive force of God's righteousness punishing the wicked over floods their hiding place, the falsehood, the illusion, the lie. The mer merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand far off, terrified at her torment. And right, the word torment, you have meant meaning mind, but it's more than mind because mind, body, soul, and spirit are connected. But they're connected at times in the way that like your, your fingernail clippings are connected to your body. Right, you can cut, you can cut off your body and your mind, your consciousness, your soul-based consciousness, which transcends your brain and flesh-based mind, will still continue. Because God has made a covenant with the righteous that goes without saying that no prophet needs to say. When you do the right thing, you know that that is the deep purpose for your life. And you know that God is going to honor you for that righteousness. That righteousness conveyed from God is rewarded by God. And there's the temporary rewards, if you will, but they're connected to the long term. And there's the long term rewards. Okay, so now I gotta turn the page here where I'm like, I guess I accidentally pressed the button, so I gotta do it in another clip. Okay. They will weep and mourn and cry out, Woe, woe to you, great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet. This connects to Proverbs 34, excuse me, 31. Okay, fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints in Revelation 19. Purple and scarlet connect to what the woman is wearing. It symbolizes the righteousness of the woman in Proverbs 31, a wife of noble character. But in Revelation 18, it symbolizes the failure of the prostitute because cities are referred to as women, right? Daughter Judah, uh, cities and people and individuals, uh, the spirits of individuals, daughter Judah, uh, daughter Zion, daughter Jerusalem, what have you. 
So Babylon as, as an evil city that rules over the cities, especially Jerusalem. We see that all throughout the uh, Old Testament. So, and glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls, those things stand for what she put her stock in, what she thinks is wisdom, righteousness, justice, discipline, maturity, what she invested in with her life actions, her life deeds, her energy, what have you. Uh, the woman representing a woman and also representing the spirit of the inhabitants of the earth, also representing the spirit of Babylon that has taken over the world through various global systems, you know, United Nations, World Bank, International Monetary Fund, the developed nations of the world, their proxy nations, the underdeveloped nations, what have you. The churches, the mosques, the synagogues, everything that the New World Order system allows for. And again, it's Novus Ordos Seclorum, which means a new secular order outside of God, refusing to acknowledge the power and greatness of God and refusing to obey God. Unlike me, where Kuro Obi means black belt, and Obi means king, heart, hut, essence, center, temple, core, and Ebo. And the word Obi is Ebo spelled backwards. And Obi is a play on words for obey. Because I obey God. Loyalty is royalty. I am loyal to God Almighty. And I can't wait till the day that I finally get screened out the rest of the way. And society has rejected me. And I can't wait to glorify God with my righteous and honorable death. When the enemies of God have finally poisoned and fumed me uh, to my last breath. One way or another. Such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Every sea captain and all who travel by ship, the sailors, remember, God, excuse me, Baal is a deity of sailors, and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off. When they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, was there ever a city like this great city? They will throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out, woe, woe to you great city, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she has been brought to ruin. So what, what made them wealthy? Why was Babylon great? It wasn't because of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was a two-faced worm, okay? And this is way after Nebuchadnezzar has come and gone. What are they referring to? They're referring to Nimrod. Because Ham begot Cush, Cush begot Nimrod, Nimrod founded Babylon. And he was a mighty warrior. Oh, there's some, some ducks, right? He was a mighty warrior before the Lord. I'll go ahead and let them fly by here. Okay, so when Nimrod was a mighty warrior before the Lord, the word Cush is a play on words for hawks, right? The word Cush is like the word cash, which is scrambled as hawks, okay? Obviously, you know, things that are greater than things of this world, the hawk symbolizes the heavens. It flies in the heavens. So when it says the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the works of his hands, that includes the, uh, the birds that feed on the flesh of Goliath, that feed on the flesh of the rebels in Revelation 19, as 1 Samuel 17 connects to Revelation 19. Very, very key scriptures there, very key central core scriptures. Okay. Rejoice over her. Okay, so what, what made uh, Babylon great was the warrior spirit of God. Exodus 15, 3, the Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name, right? Um, the root and offspring 